Hey guys, well, if you're following my channel, you know that after 13 years in the field of ABA, I'm studying for my BCBA exam because I relocated and need to become board certified. So as I'm studying, I'm making videos to help you study. So why not, right? If we, why not we all do it together? So today we're going to talk about differential reinforcement. There are five types of differential reinforcement. There's differential reinforcement of alternative behavior, differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior, differential reinforcement of other behavior, differential reinforcement of higher rates of behavior, and differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior. I have videos on all of these, so check them out. And right now we're gonna cover differential reinforcement of alternative behavior, so stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. So differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. This is probably my favorite and most used type of differential reinforcement. So first of all, let's talk about what differential reinforcement means. Oftentimes people think that it, you have to use differ, differential reinforcement with extinction. That's not necessarily true. It does pretty much hold true with DRA or differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. But simply put, differential reinforcement means you're choosing to reinforce one behavior and you're choosing not to reinforce another behavior. So a basic, plain, simple example of differential reinforcement, if I were to hold up and say this bowl, I was just having lunch, and I said, what color is this bowl? And you said red, I would, I would reinforce you because you said red is the correct answer. But you said blue, I wouldn't reinforce you because it's the wrong answer. So that's simply differential reinforcement <coughs> is that you're reinforcing some responses and you're reinforcing different responses. So there's five types of it as we talked about earlier. So differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. This is a differential reinforcement procedure used when you're putting one behavior on extinction because you don't want that behavior to occur. Maybe it's unsafe, maybe it's not social, maybe it's self-injurious. Um, and instead, you want to teach a functionally equivalent replacement behavior. So with DRA, you always have to have a functionally equivalent replacement behavior. So here's an example. Let's just say a child is typically, whenever he wants to eat something, he screams and yells, he sits at the bottom of the refrigerator, and then his mom comes over and gives him what he wants to eat. Well, we would want to put that on extinction, right? Because it's not appropriate pro-social behavior. It's not healthy. It's not happy for mom. It's not stressful for the child. So instead, we would want to give the child another way of getting what he wants. So we want to stop reinforcing the child screaming. So we're no longer going to give the child um, a food when he screams. And instead, we're going to teach him another more appropriate way or an alternative way to get that his needs met. So we're going to teach him to ask for food. Maybe we're going to put a voice button on the refrigerator so he can press it and it says, I'm hungry. Or we can give him a PEX program where he can bring a picture of food to his mom and bring it to her. You know, that's functional communication training. So in this example, now we're replacing, right? We're replacing screaming with asking for food appropriately. And it's an alternative behavior because they serve the exact same function. So let's talk about another example of differential reinforcement. So we're going to talk about Kevin. So Kevin is a teenage boy and he is looking for attention from the girls, right? Which is common, right, in teenage boys and often they're in their awkward years. Well, Kevin doesn't necessarily have a lot of social skills. So he doesn't really know how to get girls to laugh, which is what he's trying to do. So he walks up to them and he starts making inappropriate remarks about their body. And he's thinking he's going to get that attention. That's what he's trying to seek, right, his attention. Well, obviously that's not appropriate, right? It can make girls uncomfortable. It's something we have to stop. And so what we wanna do is we want to put that behavior on extinction. So we're not gonna reinforce that behavior. And instead we're gonna differentially reinforce an alternative behavior that serves the same purpose. So in this particular example, the purpose of Kevin walking up to the girls in, in telling them inappropriate remarks was to try to get them to laugh. So what's an alternative behavior to that? An alternative behavior would be to teach Kevin to tell them jokes. So instead of reinforcing inappropriate comments, we're going to now reinforce jokes. So as you can see, we're simply teaching another behavior that will get a person what they want that's more effective for them and that's more safe for them and is more happy for everybody involved. 
So let's look at a third behavior. Let's look at a sensory behavior. Let's say a behavior is maintained for sensory purposes. Well, let's just say a child really likes sensory stimulation with their hands. They're very tactile and they crave that sensation of feeling their hands and touching things. Well, that can be fine or it can be problematic depending upon the level to which that behavior interferes with a person's social experience. Now, I come from a very sensory friendly approach. So back when I started ABA over a decade ago, we used to say that we would try to normalize children with autism by getting rid of their artistic behaviors. That's not something that I think almost any ABA therapist does anymore. We've learned from our mistakes with that. We realize that's something that is crucial to what a person needs to feel comfortable in their own skin. And we allow a person, I personally do not redirect stereotypy unless it becomes problematic. But sometimes it does become problematic. So then my goal is, well, how can I give a person what they're seeking and also make sure that it's not interfering with their ability to participate in social situations. So let's just talk about Joe. So let's just say Joe really, really craves that sensation with his hands. So he's constantly banging his hands together. Well, that can be a problem in a classroom, right? If the teacher is talking and then Joe's just sitting there like, that's a problem. That's going to distract other students. Very quickly, Joe's not going to be able to be in the classroom with his peers. Or let's say Joe wants to go see a movie, and then he gets excited because there's a scene in the movie that's exciting, and he starts, well, you know very quickly, if, if, you know, if everyone going to a movie has the right to enjoy it. So the people next to him, they shouldn't have to have that noise, right? Or if you're going out to dinner. So we have to teach Joe a way where he can crave that sensation that he's getting with his hands, that's not distracting to other people. And so what we would do is we'd find a functionally equivalent, a behavior that serves the same purpose for Joe, he is getting the same amount of satisfaction, but that is more appropriate. So we would not reinforce the clapping now. When Joe's clapping, we would redirect him to maybe a fidget spinner, or maybe we would like redirect him to squeezing his hands, which is you know, something that is quiet. So it might provide the same purpose, but it's quiet for him. So that's differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior. So when would you use differential reinforcement of alternative behavior? You're using differential reinforcement of alternative behavior when you want to stop a child from engaging in a particular behavior, but they still require a way to access the function that or the whatever that behavior was reinforcing. So like in this example, obviously, the girl needs a cookie, right? Or she needs to eat. So she has to have a way of asking for food. We're not gonna just put her eating on extinction. We're just gonna teach her a more appropriate way to get it. In the example with Joe, we're not gonna take clapping and we're not gonna try to stop him from getting the sensation he needs. We're just gonna give him an alternative way of doing it. You know, we're not gonna tell Kevin, you can't talk to girls. We're gonna teach him an appropriate way to do it. So it's when you wanna stop one behavior, but you wanna teach a behavior where the child can get the exact same result. So that's differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior. I really hope this explanation is helpful. Stay tuned. I'm going to be posting videos on DRO, DRI, DRL, DRH, and I'm really going into detail because this is a video that's designed to help you study. We know that on the BCBA exam, you're going to be asking, looking at examples and trying to figure things out through examples. So I really hope this helps. Stay tuned and look forward to seeing you next time.